Hi, I'm Aurora with Supercharged Science, and what we're going to talk about today is how to keep a scientific journal. Now, if that sounds boring or cumbersome or full of hassle, don't worry. I am going to show you the most effective way, even if you don't like to read or write. Now, the scientific journal technique I'm going to show you is based on accuracy. It doesn't have to be fancy. It doesn't even have to take a lot of time. But you need to have the essentials, and that's what I'm going to show you how to do. Are you ready? Then here's what we need to do. So in order to keep a scientific journal, you're going to need a notebook and a pencil. Don't write in pen. Write in pencil because that way you can erase mistakes as you go along. For example, if you write in pen and you write the number two, but then you realize, well, maybe I meant to write the number three, and you write the three over the two, I don't know if you mean a three instead of a two or a two instead of a three. So scientists always write in pencil so they can erase anything that they need to and be completely accurate as to what they want written on their paper. Okay? All right, so the first thing you need to do is open up your notebook to the front page and write your name across the top and write what it is. Science Journal. Okay? And then we're going to open it up to a fresh page. Okay? And the first thing I like to do is I like to write the date in the corner. So the full date with the year. Okay. So this tells me when I did my experiment. Now if I'm doing experiments that are important to note the time, for example if I'm doing weather experiments or something along that nature, I'll also write what time of day. After you've got the date down, we're going to go ahead and record something about our experiment that we're doing. Now you can't keep a science journal if you're not actually doing experiments. I mean you can keep a journal to write your thoughts down, but that's different than keeping a science experiment journal. Okay? So we're going to do an experiment and I'll show you how I record it in my notebook. So I've picked a super simple experiment to do so we can focus on how to keep the journal part. You can do this with any experiment you like. Okay, so I've got a number of different balls in here. I've got a tennis ball and a rubber band ball and a racquetball and marble and so forth. And we're just going to roll them down the ramp. And I've got the end of the ramp here. And I'm going to place them up higher on the ramp and roll them down and see which one hits the ground first. Okay, very simple experiment like I mentioned. You probably did this when you were like one. <laughs> okay, so I'm going to show you how we record an experiment like that in our journal. So the first thing we do is we want to title what we're doing and just be as descriptive as possible. You don't have to be fancy or clever. I'm just going to write experiment and then underneath the word experiment I'm going to write rolling ball down ramp. Okay. So before we start the experiment I want to draw a picture of what I've done. So just in case I want to take this experiment one step further, maybe work more on it at another date, I can quickly look at my experiment setup and say, ah, that's right, that's how I set this up so I can replicate this. This is important because when scientists share their work, they often want to check each other and make sure they've got it right, especially when they're doing something important like a new discovery. So they document exactly what their experiment looked like and they'll even write down the conditions of the weather during the day, the time of day they did the experiment, the Earth's magnetic field as it was measured that day. I mean, depending on the kind of experiment, they'll record everything that they think is important that if you were to change just one of those things would change the results that you'll get by doing the same experiment. Does that make sense? Alright, so for this experiment what I would write down are the different types of uh, balls that we're going to use and also the type of ramp, the surface, as well as the angle that the ramp is angled up because you can tell if I use a steeper angle balls are going to roll down faster maybe I'll get a different result. So look at your experiment that you're doing and what is super important to write down that if you were to change that it would actually change your results. Even if you're not sure, it's best to write it down anyway, even if you don't use it later. So I'm going to go ahead and do that now. Okay, so I've got a protractor here on my ruler, so I can measure my angle of incline here, which is 35 degrees. So I'm just going to draw a picture of what I'm doing. So here's my ramp. I've got a ball rolling down it. My angle is 35 degrees. And the surface, this is vinyl, okay? I don't think the color is going to matter much for the experiment, so that's something I would omit. 
Okay. Now, in my pictures, just because I went through school as an engineer, I always indicate the direction of gravity. It's just something I was taught to do. Probably don't have to do it if it's obvious to you the ground is, you know, where you'd be standing. But um, a lot of the problems I did in school were based on uh, aerodynamics, and so you don't necessarily know which way is down for gravity, uh, especially when you're dealing with astrophysics. So um, I always indicate an arrow and I put a G next to it. So this is what my notebook looks like so far. There's my date, experiment title, and what it looks like. There's my little gravity symbol, okay? So pick something that works best for you. All right, so now we're actually gonna do our experiment. And before we do that, I wanna write down all the different kinds of objects that I've got here. Okay, so I've written down ball type, and I'm just going to go through them. So I've got a tennis ball, I've got a rubber band ball, I've got a super ball, I've got a racket ball, I've got a hacky sack, how do you think that'll work? <laughs> I've got a tiny bouncy ball, I've got a ping pong ball, I've got a billiard ball, it's a small version of it. And I have a marble. All right, so when I do this experiment, you might be tempted just to put two balls on the ramp and see which one hits first, uh, but that's not a very measurable way to do things because maybe I'll put these two together and this one wins and then I'll put these two together and this one wins but which one's faster so then you'd have to measure these two so it's a lot easier and I'll actually do a lot fewer trials if I simply do one ball at a time and I clock it if I start them exactly from the same spot up here on the ramp and I use a stopwatch and as soon as they hit the bottom that's when I'll stop my stopwatch and I'll write that time down Okay, so that's what we're going to do next. Part of the trick to keeping a scientific journal is that it makes you be more organized. So no scientist in their right mind is going to do a science experiment they already know the answer to. So the reason for doing an experiment is to answer a question. What's the question for this experiment? Well, the question is, which ball is the fastest? Which one rolls down the ramp the quickest? Okay, and I've designed an experiment to test that. I've got a bunch of different objects here. We're gonna roll down the ramp. It doesn't have to be balls. It could be a shoe. It could be a toy car. You could do all kinds of things, but I'm just sticking with this basket of um, objects. Okay, and I've designed an experiment that's going to answer that question. So this experiment, I've got a ramp. I'm gonna slide them down. I'm gonna time it, and I'm gonna find out which one's fastest. Okay, so it's very methodical and it's accurate. Okay, so I've got my different ball types here, my different object types, and what I'm gonna do over here is I'm just gonna write down time, and then in parentheses, I'm gonna write seconds. Now, it's not enough just to write down what you're measuring. So I wouldn't just put distance if I was measuring how far the ball rolled, say, after it hit here and then went further. You just can't write distance because the number underneath, maybe it says 46, or maybe it says 72. But 46 what, and 72 what? So you always want to write next to what it is that you're measuring, what the units are, how it's measured. It could be 46 centimeters, which is way different than 46 feet. So under time, I'm going to write seconds because this could be hours, minutes. Um, it could be anything like that. So you want to make sure you always write down your units next to what it is that you're measuring. Now over here, when I said ball type, um, that's the description is, is down here. Okay, so that was more of a descriptive detail, but when you're writing numerical numbers, then you definitely want to have a unit next to it. So this is what it looks like so far. I've got my main question up here, my experiment, what my experiment looks like, and what it is we're going to test. And then over here, it says time in parentheses seconds. I'm going to roll each one down the ramp and clock each one and my, write my result right there. Okay, so let's go ahead and do the experiment. This is the fun part. Okay, so tennis ball is first. I'm going to start it up at the ramp. Okay, we're gonna roll it down the hill. We're gonna start it up at the top and go. Okay, and I'm gonna write down that time. Okay, so I've got five seconds here, and if I wanted the exact, it's, if I wanted the exact, it was actually 5.41, okay? And now I'm gonna clear that, 
and I'm going to do the rubber band ball, okay? And I'm going to continue to run through the experiment, writing down the time each time. Okay, the rubber band ball was slower. Okay, I have 6.42 seconds. Okay, and let's try the super ball. Okay, I have 6.16 seconds. Okay, racket ball. All right, let's try that. Okay, that was faster. That was 5.03 seconds. Hacky sack. All right. Let me try the hacky sack down here just so you can see. Okay, so it does actually kind of roll. Not very fast. <laughs> so let's try it. Ready, set, go. All right. Hacky sack was 11.36 seconds. Bouncy ball. Okay, that actually was really fast. That was 4.25 seconds. Ping pong ball. Okay, we're going to write that down. 6.36 seconds. Billiard ball. 8.96 seconds. And the marble. Okay, marble came in at 6.34 seconds. All right. So I wrote down the time after we did each experiment. Now, if you wanted, you would do each experiment three times if you were really worried about accuracy and then take an average of those to get those numbers. But for most people, we just run it through once and see how we did, okay? So now we're gonna look it over and say, all right, so what's the answer to my question? The question is, which ball is the fastest? For me, it was the bouncy ball, so I'm gonna go ahead and box that answer. I'm gonna circle it in my data and then I'm going to write the answer here. So I'm going to write answer, the bouncy ball was the fastest. And I can write the time, 4.25 seconds. And whenever you write a result or an answer, you always box it in. So that is how you keep a scientific journal. First you start with a question, then you design an experiment that will answer that question. You take your data, you look at your data and you figure out what is your answer, what can you conclude from the answer to this question. Now if I had two or three balls that were exactly the same time, then I would simply rerun those three or maybe shorten the ramp or make it longer, maybe alter the experiment so I could figure out which one was truly the fastest. Okay. And then I'm going to write my answer here. Now something you can do as well, which we'll talk about when we do a more advanced and more thorough scientific journal entry is you can actually make recommendations. So if you were going to do this experiment again, what would you do differently or what would you improve on? And you can write that right below your answer. Okay. So that is a very simple scientific journal entry that is accurate, clean, efficient, and very easy to understand.